ஹாய் ஹலோ வணக்கம் அண்ட் வெல்கம் பேக் டு எட் அனதர் எபிசோட் ஆன் யுவர் ஃபேவரட் லெட்டர்ஸ் லா யூடியூப் சேனல் ஸோ டுடே இன் திஸ் வீடியோ வி கோயிங் டு சி அபவுட் அண்ட் இன்டர்வியூ கொஸ்டின் அண்ட் த கொஸ்டின் இஸ் இஃப் யூ சி ஸ்பைக்ஸ் இன் யுவர் சிபி யூட்டிலைசேஷன் டியூரிங் யுவர் லோட் டெஸ்ட் விச் கோஸ் பேக் டு நார்மல் அண்ட் தென் இட் ஸ்பைக்ஸ் அகெயின் ஹவ் வில் யூ பின் பாயிண்ட் தி ரூட் காஸ் ஆஃப் தி இஷ்யூ so let me uh, tell you the question again so in a, in an interview when you are asked uh, how will you handle the fluctuating cpu utilization with spikes so the key is to demonstrate a structured approach to diagnose the issue using various tools and techniques in performance engineering so uh, the question here is like when you are seeing any spikes so so we normally see uh, whenever we do our load testing we normally see spikes in our cpu utilization and at times it goes back to normal normal i mean uh, the normal the average cpu utilization and then it spikes again so when i say spike again it goes up to 90% or up to it goes beyond 90% which which i normally uh, believe it as a spike or even if your uh, average is around like 30 and if the spike is around 70 then yeah it's again a spike in your cpu utilization so in this scenario uh, how will you pinpoint the root cause of the issue okay so we will see uh, what are all the various approach to uh, diagnose the issue and uh, how we are going to fix this issue and before we move on to this video this is me your san shanmugam i welcome you all to our little sala youtube channel please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and uh, for watching more interview questions and videos like this and uh, uh, like the video uh, give a thumbs up if you like this video and if you have any questions or comments please do uh, add that in the comment section and if you uh, plan to join our channel for more informative and interesting sessions and priority to uh, trainings as well uh, for one to one uh, discussions and consultations and um, yeah and one more thing which i want to tell you like there are more uh, of our uh, little slaw family uh, we are getting placed in organizations by watching the interview interview question videos and uh, this is one among them uh, so this is again a real time question that's been asked in the interview so that's why i'm uh, answering this question so we'll now see the approach on how to uh, handle this question and handle this issue as well so the very first thing which i would do is monitoring and gathering the data so what will i monitor and what will i gather data so the first thing is the step 1 which is i will do the baseline so first i would establish a baseline of what is the normal cpu behavior over the given period like uh, i'll try to understand what is the cpu utilization over a given time which includes a typical usage and also i will uh, monitor it with the load so i would compare the current performance to this baseline which is the normal cpu behavior to this baseline and the se- second step is uh, doing the time correlation so i will observe if there are any time based pattern for example for every 5 minutes uh, during the specific time of the day when the spike occurs so that would give me an idea like if if something goes wrong during that time based pattern and then the detailed monitoring where i will use tools like top htop nmon if it is in ubuntu linux and if it is windows it i'll use perfmon or any other advanced apm tools like grafana prometheus datadog so all these tools will give me uh, or will provide a real time cpu utilization details and along with the historical data trends and these tools will help me identify which process is spiking the cpu right so we need to understand the process so that's the main target uh, for us in terms of collecting these details so overall in this first step i will do a baseline which is i will try to establish a baseline of the normal cp behavior and the load behavior and then i'll do a time correlation where i will closely observe if there are any time based patterns and then i'll use the uh, apm tools um, like grafana prometheus datadog or even app dynamics or uh, dynatrace also would do good and then if you do not have them you can use top htop nmon and perfmon for this monitoring so now we'll move on to the second step so in my second step i will do a process level analysis so in my first step i do i did a monitor and gathering data and then the second step i'll do a process level analysis so how will i do the process level analysis so i'll use tools like top or ps in linux or perfmon in windows 
where I would look for the process or threads which are responsible for the spike. So again, my target is the processes or the threads which are responsible for the spike because I'm not going to run around everything else. I'm just going to target only my only the processes or the threads. So the first step of it is I would check for any process which are consuming abnormal CPU during the spike because this could be a runaway process or a background job or any misconfigured application which is running in your app server. So we need to find whether your process which you are looking for could be a runaway process or a background job or a misconfigured application and then if it's a specific service or application you should investigate further by looking into logs and resource usage patterns so now the uh, third step where i will investigate the application behavior and that's really important because uh, you should check Behavior is I will do a log analysis because when I check the application log to see if there are any issues for example it can be an exception it can be an error or it can be a warning I would look for any issues around the time of the spikes so that's very important and this will give me clue if there is a task or if there is any query that's causing the spike so basically I would I will look for the logs uh, for analysis in terms of the exceptions, errors, or warnings. That's very, really, uh, I will have a keen look on um, uh, the logs. And the second part is profiling. So I will prefer uh, or I will profile the application using tools like JProfiler or your kit for Java and dot trace for .NET or perf for Linux. So these tools will help me to identify any inefficient code paths uh, or for any memory leaks or expensive operations which are leading to sp CPU spikes. And in fact, I will add more videos on uh, the J profiler, your kid, dot trace, or perf in our upcoming uh, days. But yeah, uh, you can use these words uh, to get an attention uh, from your interviewer. So we can use words like you can use tools like these, like the J profiler, your kid. Uh, and these tools are specific to, to these languages and uh, operating systems. So you have to uh, be very careful while telling these. So uh, in this step, like in terms of profiling, I will profile the application using tools like JProfiler, your kit for Java, dot trace for .NET, or perf for Linux, because these will help you identify the inefficient code paths, memory leaks, or any uh, expensive operations which are leading to CPU spikes. And now we'll move to the next step. So in my fourth step, of fixing or analyzing the CPU spikes, I will check for the external factors. When I say external factors, I would verify for any external scheduled jobs. Like for example, you might know there are backups that are running behind your front end, like front end jobs. Like they might be running in the background. And you you, uh, you must have seen some scheduled jobs that are running uh, in the background and some cron jobs, right? So these must be running at the same time as the C CPU spike. So you should check for, or you should check the logs, like I said. So and you should check with the other team, the dev team, and ask that if there are any backups that are, is that the time, whether there are any backups running or whether there are any scheduled scripts running or any other cron jobs which are running at the same time, okay? And then, Checking for network and IO activity. That's uh, another important aspect which you should do, which using tools like IO stat or VM stat, because this will help you to ensure that the CPU spikes are not triggered by the excessive IO operation or contention for resources. Because these tools, like I told you, the tools like IO stat and VM stat will help you to, at least they'll help you to um, uh, confirm or they can uh, help you uh, to understand, okay, these issues are not because of the excessive IO operations, IO, I mean, input output operations or any other contentions for resources. So they can help you to identify like, okay, these are not the reason for issues. Okay, let's move on to the next uh, part. Okay, so that will give you an idea on that. So now we'll move on to the step five. So now after doing all this analysis uh, in step five, I'll do a environment and configuration check because the reason behind that is because your CPU spikes could happen due to any configuration issues. For instance, the thread pools. So we all know thread pools are the uh, main uh, 
component which makes the application keeps running right so i'll make sure that whether the thread pools are configured correctly or incorrectly uh, which are which are which leads to resource contention or over utilization of cpu and in fact i have created a several videos on threads and thread pools and various states of threads in a separate video so if you did not watch please do watch that and yeah coming back to this one so i will make sure that uh, the thread pools are configured correctly or i will check whether they are configured incorrectly and which because that could lead to resource contention so when i say resource contention that will not release the resource to other threads so that will create a contention okay or it will be over utilizing the cpu so either it takes too much of cpu or whether it's like doing contention so i'll understand i'll try to understand whether that could be the reason or else or else the next step is i would uh, ensure that the server has the appropriate hardware specification for the workload it is handling uh, because overloaded servers may exhibit periodic cpu spikes under stress because that's another uh, important aspect which, which most of us do not have an IE. Because if you do not have a proper an appropriate hardware specification, that would definitely give us a spikes for the workload that we are handling. So that's the reason in the very beginning I've told you like we should do a baseline during the normal usage and with the load test so that we can compare the CPU usage with the baseline, uh, with the load test and the baseline. So th all these will add value to your uh, findings and even well, during the interview as well. So just to uh, just to do a quick recap. So the first thing uh, in, environment con in environment and configuration check, I will do, I will check whether there are any uh, thread pools which are configured incorrectly, uh, because that could lead to uh, resource contention or over utilization of CPU. And the second part is I will check for any hardware specifications, any inappropriate hardware specifications for the workload which is handling. And now we'll move on to the uh, next step, the step six. So after all uh, doing all these analysis and checks, I will try to move on to my next step where I will try to simulate or replicate the issue. So when I say uh, I will try to replicate the issue, so I will do this in a non-production environment. It can be a staging, it can be a pre-prod, it can be a UAT environment. So the main thing is I will try to replicate this in a non-production environment because when I generate a similar load pattern uh, using tools like JMeter, or Gatling or LoadRunner, I can simulate stress on the system and observe how the CPU behaves. Okay, so this, this step actually will help me to confirm if any specific queries or any jobs or any workloads are causing the issue. So this is a, a, a key uh, step because, yeah, we all know that there is an issue and uh, there is a CPU spiking, but how will you find it again? So how will you replicate it? So for that, we, we are going to use the non-production environment and we are going to use tools like JMeter, Gatling, LoadRunner. It can be any of the other tools like NeoLoad, K6, whatever tool you wish to do. You can use any of these tools but the key thing is you, are, you have to replicate, you have to simulate the issue, right? And now the last step, which is analyzing the garbage collection or background jobs. So the last and the most important step of this issue or this interview question is analyzing the GC, analyzing the garbage collection or the background jobs. So in case of Java application, uh, you should analyze the garbage collection logs using tools like GC Viewer or Garbage Cat to check if any frequent garbage collection cycles are causing the spikes because long GC passes can cause intermittent CPU spikes because the GVM, JVM is clearing its memory. So that's the reason you should check if there are any frequent GC uh, cycles, the garbage collection cycles are sp causing the spikes or if there are any long GC spikes, it could cause intermittent CPU spikes uh, because the JVM is clearing its memory. So you should understand what type of garbage collection is happening, like how frequent it is happening and what how much of JVM is getting cleared. So you should analyze all these in the step. And how, how will you analyze this? So when you are simulating, in, in the previous step I have told you, when you are simulating your load test in the non-production environment, you will see the, or you will observe the garbage collection activity. So when you observe it, just check your uh, whether is there any frequent GC cycle or whether it's a long garbage collection pass. Okay, so this will give you an idea on why is there a 
uh, CPU spike. Okay, so let, let me just do a quick recap. So in the very first step, what did I do? So I did a, I do a baseline and uh, I do a time correlation. So when I say I do a baseline, I would establish a baseline of normal CPU behavior over the given period, which includes a typical usage and a load usage, uh, load test. And then I look for the time correlation and then I will do a detailed monitoring. So I use tools like HOP, uh, HTOP, TOP, NMON, Windows Task Manager, or PerfMon, or tools like App Dynamics, Renetrace, Grafana, Prometheus, Redadog, whatever tools you say. I'll do it. And then I'll do a process level analysis because I will check, I, I would check for any process just consuming any abnormal CPU time during the spikes because this could be a runaway process, a background job, or any misconfigured application. And if it's a service or application, I will investigate further by looking into its logs or resource usage patterns. So jumping to the third step where I will investigate the application behavior. So as I mentioned, when I, I was, I will look into the logs. I will check for application logs to see if there are any issues around the time of spikes because that will give me a clue that if there is a, any task or query that is causing the spike. And when it comes to profiling, I will profile the application using tools like JProfiler, Yorkit, Dot Trace, Perf for specific environments and languages. And then I'll check for any external factors. When I say external factors, it can be a backup job, it can be a schedule script, or it can be a cron job, which is running in the background. And also I'll check for any network or, or any IO activity. And then in step five, I'll check for any environment and configuration check for any inappropriate hardware, hardware specification or for any threat pools, which is creating any contention. And then I will, uh, in step six, I will simulate or I will replicate the issue by running the test in a non-production environment. So when I do a test in a non-production environment, I'll analyze the garbage collection of the background jobs. And in the analysis of uh, garbage collection, I will check whether it's a long GC spike, a long GC pass, or whether it's a frequent GC cycle. So that will give me an idea on why uh, the CPU is spiking abnormally. So just to give an example, so in one of my uh, previous uh, example where I have encountered CPU spikes in a Java-based web application, so using Grafana, so you can add, you can add, you can add all these. So using Grafana, um, I identified a correlation between the spikes and the specific time interval. So by using top and JSTAC, I found out that a background thread was causing these spikes which is executing every five minutes. So upon further investigation, I discovered it was running a resource intensive SQL query. So that's the culprit actually. <laughs> so optimizing the query by adding appropriate indexes and by adjusting the thread scheduled uh, thread scheduler, I have resolved this issue. So you can even give this as an example. And finally, the CPU spike has stopped. So I have used the tool. So I found out there is an issue. I found out what uh, the application is built on uh, and then I have used the tool and I have identified, I have correlated the spike and the issue, the specific time interval. And then I have used tools like top and JSTAC where I have found out that a background thread was causing the spike which is executing every five minutes. And that's because I have discovered that it is running a resource intensive SQL query. It can be GC as well. Like right? That is another example. That's another time where I have even found that GC was running. But in this scenario, in, in this example, which you can give, you can tell that you are experiencing a resource inter intensive SQL query. And by optimizing the query uh, by adding appropriate indexes. Uh, in fact, I have even detailed uh, video on indexes, store procedures on how to tune your database queries. So you can even watch that in the interview question playlist. So by adjusting, uh, by for tuning it and by adjusting all these, uh, the thread scheduling uh, inter intervals, I have fixed this issue and the CPU spikes have stopped. Because these kind of answers will demonstrate a clear and a structured approach because this will show them that you have familiarity with these tools, with the process, and it will show the interview that you have did this in real time. Okay, So I wish you all the very best and with that I come to an end of this video. Um, until I meet you in my next videos, bye bye from Asin Shanmukam and your favorite Little Slaw YouTube channel. Take care and bye bye.